What up, y'all? Appreciate you showing up, hanging out, listening to my dumb ass. Like and subscribe. <clears throat> so, Happy New Year. It's, uh, we made it past the midnight of the day, whatever. Um, and so, with the new year, everybody has their resolutions. Everybody has, I'm going to do this this year, and probably doesn't happen with whatever, but... Something that I kind of just realized or, or a type of resolution that I think we should do as Xbox gamers in this war that we have with the PlayStation donkey unicorns and the ponies. And I know you're going to hate what I'm about to say. You're going to be like, nope, not do, nope. That's j nope, I'm not doing that. No hell to the no. But listen, I was listening to Podcast Beyond, the latest, today is the second, the latest they put out today, I guess. I don't know. And it was the saddest, <laughs> it was the saddest show I'd ever heard because what the show was, was the year in Sony. Let's see what they did last year, 2023, the 2023 wrap up show. Let's go through all the things that they did. Sony's the greatest, yay. No, it wasn't that. So before I go through the funny parts of what they said, what we should do as Xbox gamers, even though it's it's like taking medicine, you don't want to take it, but you know, you kind of need to. It's for information. Information is the power. So we need to listen to these donkey unicorn and pony shows. Not so much like the 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 fan people, but industry shows that are literally like podcast beyond a sony centric show listen to them listen to colin morality show i have to do that that's one thing i haven't done i have to get into back into sacred symbols because it's a long show but the purpose of listening to these shows is not to be entertained not to be informed because that's not what they do is to gauge the sentiment of the playstation fandom you listen to these people talk about what Sony's doing and just, okay, you don't even have to listen to Colin's show because like I said, it's four hours. That's a, that's an ask, but listen to podcast beyond that came out one, two, whatever, whatever. And it's uh, the you know PlayStation year wrap up 2023, 20. Yeah. Listen to how they speak about these things. Okay. So I'm getting into it. So they first started off with, oh man. Death, I guess Death Stranding, the director's cut came out this 2023. I don't, but they were talking about Death Stranding. Oh, no, 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 because um, Kojima's making a movie. And so I think A24 is making it or something, blah, blah, blah. I was like, All right, I mean, that might be a cool movie. And then they started talking about the game. And I was like, I thought everybody liked that game. I thought, you know, hey, it's kind of cool. It's, you know, Kojima is dope, right? It's exclusive. Let's go. Well, it's kind of exclusive. It's on Game Pass PC now, so not really exclusive. But they, as in pretty much all of them, were like, yeah, I didn't enjoy playing that game. I'm like, where was all of this talk when the game came out? Like, where was the review that said, I didn't enjoy playing this game? Da, 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 da. It wasn't that. It was like, oh, it's a PlayStation exclusive. Yay. I don't even know what they got, what it got for a score. I don't care. But what they were saying did not mirror what the sentiment was when the game came out. That's all I'm saying. Maybe because it went multi-plat multi -plat, and then they're like, oh, it's not as good anymore. I don't know how donkey unicorns think. I just don't know. Anyway, they were like, eh, I didn't enjoy playing it. I like the world, but I don't know. Delivery packages is dumb, stupid. I was like, yep. <laughs> Look like a dumb game to me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so they went on. Next thing they talk about, I believe, was the Last of Us TV show. Now this is all, they're talking about all movies and TVs for, from like the first the first two things, right? So it's like the best thing that they said in this show, as far as this this podcast basically, was about the Last of Us TV show, not about video games, but a video game TV show. And I'm like, okay, is that all y'all got? PlayStation people? A show on HBO or Max or whatever they're calling it now? All right. So they're like, yeah, it's great to listen to the world. And no, it's the best video game adaptation. I'm like, they might be right. But that's not a game. <laughs> 
But they did say that 2023, what Sony did. I mean, they didn't say nothing about the cameras. But anyway, moving on. Um, what else did they say? They said stuff in the middle that I don't remember. Um, they talked about Twisted Metal. They were like, I didn't understand that show. It wasn't for me. I mean, it was like no... There was n- no good news. They did talk about Spider-Man. Oh, Spider-Man's the best. I mean, yeah, yeah sure, sure. Spider-Man was good. But that was it. Um, I am conflating a little bit of Spider-Man because um, before that, I listened to the um, the uh, Rebel FM music extravaganza. It was five hours long, but it's all video game music. So I'm like, Psh, let's go. And they had Spider-Man music in there. And I'm going to be honest. Uh, this is a little tangent. Uh, uh, Colin, not Colin, um, Arthur Geese, he was like, they, what the composer of Spider-Man 2 did was meld the kind of superhero themes of the Marvel movies with urban beats, basically. And I was like, yes, they did that. But it's not that great because I'm listening to it and I'm like, this sounds like some old... It sounds so formulaic, basically. It didn't sound good. Like, and he compared it to the Spider-Verse movie. And I'm like, sure, but I think the Spider-Verse movie did it better. Or I was distracted by the, the colors and I didn't really notice how good or bad it was. I don't know if that makes sense. So, but anyway, back on track. So uh, they're talking about, um, what else did they talk about? Oh, they talked <laughs> <laughs> they talked about the PSVR 2. They basically they said Sony put out more hardware and less software, and it was really all about hardware and not really that much about software. That's what Max Global said. I say like, yeah, pretty much. And they talked about the PSVR 2 and how Sony just literally let it let it die, let it let it out to die. Didn't give it no water, no food, just psh, that's it. And I was like yeah, pretty much. And they were like, yeah, I mean, everyone, they're like, yeah, I, I, what's her name, Jada? She's like, yeah, I, uh, I put it up, I just opened it recently, and I played Beat Saber. I'm like, she didn't even play the, or they didn't even play the, uh, whatchamacallit, the actual game, the exclusive, the Call of the Mountain, whatever, whatever. And Max was like, yo, Call of the Mountain, they put it out, and it was like, yeah, okay, but uh, nothing. It's been nine months, it's nothing. <laughs> I'm like, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, uh, what's <laughs> um, uh, what's his face said something too, but I don't remember what he said. Uh, Brian, Brian Altano said something about it. He's always got jokes, so he says something about it too. Uh, and then they talked about the PlayStation Portal. I think that's the last thing they talked about. I think I'm skipping something, but it doesn't matter. They talked about the Portal, and basically they said if Sony would have posited this device as more of a controller with a screen on it than a portable literally playstation portal whatever portable uh, uh it would have been fine in his mind anyway and i and i would agree with him because messaging wise it would have been like oh it's just a, it's just a controller with a screen on it but why am i paying 200 dollars for a controller with a screen on it then you just sit it next to the playstation uh pulse plus pro or whatever it's called and uh, then you can say, oh, that one's, isn't that one 200 too? Or is that more than 200? I don't remember. But if you put those together, then it's like, oh, okay, I get the one with the screen because it, it might be cheaper. I don't remember. But anyway, all the things that this PlayStation-centric podcast was talking about, disappointment, disappointment. Oh, the TV show's good. Disappointment, disappointment. One cool game. Disappointment, disappointment. The disappointment station is alive. Man, look, Sony's going to be in trouble for a minute. They have nothing. They have no first party. They have to rely on third party. And if if Microsoft plays their cards right, and if, if I don't know if it's too late, if they can get in there and snatch some of those marketing deals away from Sony, Sony's in trouble. Sony is in, I mean, they're in trouble anyway without Microsoft having to do anything. And honestly... What Matt Booty said, he's like, yo, we in the position, we got bank. We gonna spend them out of the, we gonna spend them out of oblivion existence. We gonna scatter this stardust across the universe. Cause we got money. And I'm like, I'm I'm like, they kinda did that. 
already with one foul swoop foul swoop? is that how you say it i don't know and uh i'm looking i'm looking i'm like well you know as 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 kind of a not a street i'm not a strategic type of guy but sometimes you want to you want to turn on that part of your brain to, to keep it going you know exercise your brain and stuff right so i say i i think to myself what could sony do strategically to co- survive let me just say that survive survive the the coming tsunami hurricane tornado earthquakes uh caldera all everything's happening asteroids gonna hit the, everything's happening it's gonna hit all sony's gonna hitting all sony uh so like what could they do and like the only thing they can do because they ain't got no games coming out is buy third party exclusivity that's a sad state of affairs when you're like supposed to be the market leader and you ain't got no games and you gotta buy you gotta rent and lease games you gotta you gotta make it exclusive to keep it away from your competition that's gonna stop you with just their first party you do first party versus first party xbox is destroying them because of the activision blizzard king deal because of that they're destroying them now before it was like oh, eh, oh, oh. and the fact that people are getting tired of that sony formula that fragrance is starting to get stale starting to stank you know what i'm saying and so like ghost of tsushima the last of us uncharted god of war i mean i would say god of war is probably their strongest ip their strongest brand within that uh genre within that formula but everything else is is not as good not as strong i mean spider-man is a little different because it it's a it's open world and b they're taking the the core the foundation of the sony playstation formula and they're trying to infuse it into the spider-man open world game which is with all these cutscenes and all this stuff and while that's fine and if that's what they're going to do to every type of game that they make i don't i that's not that's not sustainable first that's not sustainable if they that was see, that was the whole problem with the last of us factions or the last of us online whatever they're gonna call it they tried to do that they tried to do an online game and then make it all cinematic and have all these cutscenes and stuff and it's like stop and make a freaking multiplayer game make that first and then i mean honestly people who play multiplayer games don't care about cinematics they want to play they want to get in the game they want oh man i lost a let's get in the game again they want to get in the game at the shortest amount of time they don't want to see no cutscene. they don't want to see no no narration they don't want to see no nothing they just want to play the game if your game's good obviously and so i don't i just i look they i'm not saying everybody at sony is dumb or anything but where are the smart people telling the other people who don't know any better we don't need to spend 40 million dollars on cutscenes on a multiplayer game can we just make a really good game and it stands on itself now that being said i would say fortnite they do have their little intro like every time they do a, a drop they'll be like oh we got a little intro and this little story and that's fine do that but don't don't do hours and hours and hours and hours of cutscenes. i don't even know what they had in store for the last of us but i i mean assuming I'm I'm assuming based off of The Last of Us the regular, the regular game that they were trying to kind of do that do another side story basically and entwine it with this multiplayer stuff and that's a good idea I guess on its on its own on paper but realistically no because that's not how players play and that's that's another thing this is smart the smart this is a giant corporation who has made a living not a living but they've made a lot of money making video games how do they not know how to make a video game if they're the market lead how are you the market leader and you don't know how to make any other game besides walking talking dads how and then you think you go back you back you go back into sony's history like oh what they've been doing all this time you know that came up playstation and the playstation 3 playstation 4 right xbox gave them the playstation 4 generation so they had no competition they didn't have to get a multiplayer game because they had call of duty they had that call of duty fragrance they had that call of duty um deal and so the marketing 
And so they relied on that. And they didn't do anything for themselves. They didn't build anything. They tried in PS3, but they failed. But they, st- you, is that is that the lesson? Oh, I failed. I'm not going to try anymore. No, you you fail, and you say, okay, what did I do wrong? You course correct. You try again. You know what I'm saying? And I don't talk about relationships. That's different. Cause don't don't look at me. Uh, and <laughs> excuse me. But it's I mean, if if you're a little kid. And, and you understand what's going on and you understand the history. I mean, if you have an adult to t- tell you these things, then, you know, you can you can make the analogy. But, you know, little kids are just going to be like, game, Spider-Man, let's play it, had fun, that's it. That's, that's all they care about. And most people, you know, casuals, that's all they care about too. And the casuals that have bought PlayStation 5s, why PlayStation 5 sold, I'm going to say, 30 million units, is because the casuals glommed onto it based off of last year they won the generation and that's sony's kind of fear they want to they want the the facade of success as far as we so we won the console generation we sold the most consoles so that the next generation can be kind of a snowball effect oh they're gonna buy it again because we won last time we're gonna win this time blah 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 right but they are missing a bunch of components that's actually going to make them money. That's actually going to keep this the actual business surviving, to survive, you know, in business. And they're so fixated on, you know, Metacritic and console sales, but Metacritic doesn't equate to that much. I mean, it, I, would, I wouldn't say it equates. I think uh, word of mouth and Twitter equates more as far as money owes min, money goes than metacritic but you know it's 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 interesting and puzzling and it's a lot of different things and it's definitely some psychology into that and i'm not i'm not a psychology i wasn't a psychology major when i was in school i was an art art major and i didn't finish <laughs> so there you go but you know, you look at you look at this and they're like, wow, you know, and, and you could correlate this to different parts of, of your life, whether it's uh, people in your life or situations, you know, you, you can you can make correlations sometimes. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is just games. We're just try, trying to have fun. And, you know, ultimately <laughs> it's a new year. So get your games on, you know, get the get all the games, get you some cheap Xboxes. If you don't have the Xbox Series X yet. Go get it, cause it's cheap, and it's, it's I saw I was like, I got it. So you know, you know, if I got it, you know it's cheap. <laughs> cause I'm cheap. I'm not cheap. Somebody called me cheap the other day. I was like, I'm not cheap. I'm frugal. I guess they're both true. I'm not actually cheap. It's like if there's something, if there's something that I really want, within reason, of course, I'm gonna get it. You know, if I was cheap, I wouldn't have bought a Series X because I already had an S. And I was like, I already got an S. Why do I need an X for? I can play all the games, right? But I was like, ah, you know, it's a good deal. Now, everybody likes a good deal. You get the good deal, good deal. Anyway, sorry for the tangent. But let me know in the comments below what you think. I mean, go watch the podcast beyond. But what did you think about the year that Sony had last year, 2023? What were the highlights? Um... I would ask what were the low lights, but I don't want to have a novel because I know somebody in chat, I forgot to look up the name, my bad, but somebody in chat put down like every point, every low point of Sony. I was like, D-. I, I said, thank you, thumbs up. And I put a heart on that because I was like, yo, that was work and I appreciate it. I need to print it out and put it and frame it or something because it was just so much. I was like, damn, yeah, that a lot happened last year. That wasn't good. Like Spider-Man coming out and being a good game that was that was cool that was the that was the best part of, of sony's last year everything else nope hot garbage dumpster fire tra- bad just bad bad and you know you look at Porter rock you look at freaking uh jw look at all these fools and it's like how do you keep go- how do you keep cheerleading for these losers they feel like losers to me. I mean, you may be like, oh, but the console sales, they got more consoles. I'm like, 
Y'all know that's not, they didn't even make as much money. Anyway, I'm sorry. I keep, keep going around and around. I still think that they, they inflated the numbers. That's why they, nobody's buying them damn games because they don't have people playing them because they don't only have 30 million PlayStations hooked up to the internet. The rest are in storage or scalper still got them. I don't know what they're waiting for. They need to sell them joints. Anyway, I appreciate you showing that. Listen, my dumb, like and subscribe. We are, we are like 10 away, 10 away from reaching 500, 10 subs away. And I'm like, yo, it's not big. So it'll happen this year. I mean, look, if it doesn't happen this year, there's something seriously wrong with things, reality, ah, uh, whatever. It's not a big deal, but you know, it's, uh, I guess it's a milestone. It used to be a thousand because they were like, oh, we'll do 500 and then it's like 500 and then the thousand is another milestone for other stuff. So, I mean, whatever. Uh, but my, my, my thought process and my mentality as far as all that stuff goes, like monetary monetization and stuff, I don't. I don't like it because I don't want to have like ads pop up in the middle or ad. I'd rather do like ads at the end or something. I think you could do that. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of the same reason why I haven't like done a Patreon yet because, um, it's, I can offer you guys, like, what could I offer you guys? Like for a dollar, I would say a dollar a month, I guess you get a song and that's fair, right? You pay a dollar for a song anyway. I don't know how much they cost now. They're probably cheaper if you buy the whole album, obviously, but, um, that's what I want. I want a fair transaction. So if I offer, if I put up a song every month for Patreon, uh, you know, Patreonizers, then um, I feel good about that because I'm giving you something, and it's just not, you know, you're just not giving out money for somebody begging for it or whatever. I mean, I, don't, I don't beg for it, but I don't. I got a job. That's all I'm saying. I got a job, and right now it's all right. So, but I mean, you know, with a Patreon and with that, with like extra money, it's sure I could buy some stuff and I could, I don't know, I could, uh, I could, I could do things, invest more things into, invest into more things as far as a studio and stuff. But if I need to do that, I'm going to do it anyway. So that's why I don't do that. You know what I mean? But uh, I'll probably eventually do that just because I know some people want to support. You know, and that's definitely appreciated. So I'm not gonna be like, oh no, you can't give me money or whatever. It's not, it's not even about the money. So, but you know, I would say this: it's a new year. If you ain't got money, save your money. If I put a Patreon up and you ain't got no money, don't get, don't worry about giving me money. I always tell people, I don't, I don't, I don't need your money, basically. You know, if I need money, I'll, I'll get it somehow. I'll go get another job or something. You know, that's just how I am. I'm kind of, kind of stubborn like that. <laughs> but anyway, super rambles, too much rambles. But um, appreciate y'all. Let me know in the comments about all this Sony stuff. The year in, rear, the year in review. And what was the worst thing about it for you guys? And also about the Patreon stuff. If if I were to do a Patreon, what would you guys want besides like the song a month? Um, and it would be like a, it would be a unique specific song for the Patreon, I think. Cause I have like, I got a lot of songs in my, in my chest of songs, but I don't just want to go in there and throw it. I want to make something new and juicy. You know what I mean? So that's what I would do. But uh, besides that, what, what do you think you would want, you know, that I can do? trying to think anyway <laughs> let me know in the comments because you, you guys feedback is, is is super important um and like i said i like every comment even though you guys are arguing back and forth i'm like boop 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 so um but i appreciate i appreciate you guys uh keeping it civil you know what i mean you guys disagree you guys say this and that you get a little you get a little x body and pony ish and stuff and that's fine but like i said keep it Keep it respectful and, uh, you know, it's all about the games, baby. So, but yeah, I appreciate it. I got to go and I got to go now, <laughs> but I appreciate y'all and I'll see y'all on the next one. Till the way down.